On this episode, I discuss the nine things that you can do if you have shoulder pain without needing to see the doctor. Hello, this is Siddharth Damber, the physician at Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine. On this show, we focus on topics concerning arthritis, tendinitis, injuries, and back pain, and state-of-the-art treatments for your musculoskeletal condition. Shoulder pain can be tremendously limiting to your life in that it can cause reduction in your ability to work, exercise, and do other activities that make your life enjoyable. I've spoken in a prior video about what is going on within the shoulder when you have that sort of pain. Today's episode is about what you can do to help yourself when you have shoulder pain so that you can get better and actually avoid needing to see a physician at the same time. Disclaimer alert. For the vast majority of you who are either watching or listening to this content, I am likely not your treating physician. Some software algorithm has deemed it appropriate for us to be communicating together. And I am certainly a physician that has information that is useful to you in terms of understanding your shoulder pain, as well as how to treat it in a low risk, non-surgical manner. But disclaimer to my thoughts, if you've had a severe injury, if you're not getting better with very conservative management only, if your symptoms are progressively getting worse, if you have significant neurologic symptoms like weakness, numbness, or tingling, or if you're just concerned that your pain is not progressing in the way that it should, please get checked out by your actual physician. So there are a number of things that you can do on your own to self-treat your pain if you've had a shoulder injury. Some of these may seem really obvious. Some of these you may not have considered before. I would recommend all of them as conservative, low-risk, first-line options to see if you can manage your shoulder pain before having to see an actual physician. Number one is stop or modify the activity that is actually causing your shoulder pain. This may sound really obvious, uh, but the reality is that there are certain activities work-related that may be hard to stop or completely modify if they're essential to what you're doing. But if you're able to, change or stop that activity, then I would strongly recommend doing so to at least initially stop the pain while you then try to do other things to then rehabilitate the shoulder into a better position. Option number two is to correct any technique that that can be improved with your activity. For example, I played tennis when I was a teenager and then stopped as a young adult, but then picked it up again in my mid to late thirties. When I started playing tennis again, I started to develop pain in my shoulder when I was serving and hitting overheads. My solution at that time was I worked with a physical therapist and a tennis coach, did a lot of videotaping of my serve and overhead activity, adjusted and modified and improved my technique, and that's made a humongous difference in my ability to continue to do overhead activities with my right shoulder and continue to play tennis as well. So modifying activity is a really important one, but even improving your technique is even one step higher. Bad posture can put a lot of stress on your neck, your upper back, and your shoulders. On the other hand, improving your posture can take a lot of stress off of those areas, including your shoulder. If your posture is something that could use some improvement, I'd strongly recommend working with a clinic like Egoscu that focuses on posture correction technique exercises. Option number four is to work with a good physical therapist who can help with strengthening the muscles around your shoulder. Strengthening the muscles of the upper back, the neck area, and around the shoulder makes a big difference. Strengthening those tissues helps with stability, which in turn helps with function, range of motion, uh, as well as pain as well great first line option as well is strengthening all those muscles. Number five is maximizing the range of motion in your shoulders. Normal shoulder health includes having a very full and wide range of motion in the shoulder. 
anything that you can do either via active range of motion exercises or passive range of motion exercises with a trainer or physio is helpful. That can include exercises that they help you out with, can even include some hanging exercises, but anything that lets you maintain a full range of motion in the shoulder is essential for normal and optimal musculoskeletal health of the shoulder. Number six is manual therapy. That can include massage, chiropractic, and similar techniques. Anything that helps to relieve the stress on the muscles and myofascial tissues around the shoulder and the neck will help with your shoulder as well. Taking stress off of those tissue planes will help with pain around the shoulder, improve range of motion, and improve the biomechanics of the shoulder as well. Option seven are other complementary therapies, including acupuncture and dry needling. These techniques can help with myofascial pain as well. These are another great low risk, helpful modalities that can help with pain and shoulder health. Number eight is heat versus ice or thermal therapies. These are good adjunctive treatments and should be used in a focused and appropriate fashion. So heat can help in terms of muscle and myofascial pain. Ice or, or cold therapy or cryotherapy can help with inflammation. It's important, however, to be careful with how you're using cryotherapy or cold therapy. Controlling excessive inflammation is good. In particular, if you're talking about chronic inflammation, it's important to understand that acute inflammation in the setting of a recent injury to some degree is helpful and is required to kickstart the normal healing process. So I think focused cryotherapy and even focused heat can have a benefit long term as well if it's used appropriately. And number nine are certain over the counter supplements. The three big ones that I recommend are glucosamine chondroitin, omega-3, and turmeric supplements. Glucosamine chondroitin can help with pain related to osteoarthritis. I think that's a good option for a lot of people that have musculoskeletal issues. Omega-3, which comes from either fish oil or flaxseed oil supplements, and turmeric can help with inflammation and related pain. I think those are definitely preferable to using chronic anti-inflammatory medications or chronic narcotic pain medications. And I think those three over-the-counter supplements are helpful for the vast majority of people that have various musculoskeletal conditions as well. So to sum it up, there are quite a few different things that you can do on your own to help yourself if you have shoulder pain, and they may allow you to avoid additional medical or surgical intervention. In a follow-up video, I will discuss when you actually should see your physician for your shoulder pain, what treatment options may be available to you at that point, including what regenerative medicine treatment options may be helpful to help deal with your shoulder issue. So question of the day, if you've had shoulder pain, what have you done to self-treat that's made a difference for your own health? Thanks for tuning in. If you found this content valuable, you can subscribe to either my YouTube channel or via my email newsletter. If you'd like to learn more, see chicagoarthritis.com. Thank you for your time. Have a good day and live well.